Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Waves from Slidenet here. In this video, we are going to talk about how to create an object-oriented program in Java. All these days we were talking about theoretical stuff. It's time we started taking a look at a practical example and try to understand how everything works. So we are going to take the world's most famous example that every beginner has probably seen. The step of creating a bank account. So the customer opens an account in a bank. Customer must have an initial balance of $100, which means while withdrawing the money, you have to ensure that no matter how much money the customer withdraws, there is always $100 that is remaining inside the account. So while opening the account, the customer can withdraw, deposit, and check his balance anytime he wants. The bank does not charge any fees for the first withdrawal, but for all subsequent withdrawals, the bank is going to charge some transaction fees that we are going to assume something the bank also calculates a certain amount of interest on the amount deposited by the customer now remember it just calculates the interest for simplicity's sake we are not gonna take time into consideration otherwise this is gonna be a totally complex problem because then you will have to de determine exactly when the customer created the account what date it was and then you'll have to figure out how the bank is gonna add interest whether it's a yearly basis half yearly basis or stuff like that and that is gonna make the problem way way too complicated so we are gonna simply calculate the interest on whatever amount is present for the duration of one year and just give the user a kind of an idea about how much interest he can get on his deposit and then we're gonna see how to actually make this problem work in Java so whenever you see a problem like this if you're a beginner you totally freeze right now and you wonder what the hell you should do right let's talk, talk about what you should first do First step is to find the nouns in this problem definition. Now, that is the weirdest thing you ever heard on any channel by any guy who teaches Java, that's for sure. Find the nouns in this. So let's take a look what I'm trying to do here. If you go ahead and list everything out, now I'm not an expert in English, I probably have missed certain nouns here. But if you guys do know better English than I do and better English grammar than I do, then you're welcome to tell me what are the nouns here. But for understanding, I have marked everything over here. The ones you see in red color are nouns according to me so that is covered everything now of course if there are duplicates then eliminate those duplicates and keep only one word so here if you notice there is customer account bank balance fees withdrawal transaction interest interest rate and almost the same thing is over here but if you guys notice you're probably gonna say that hey there is interest over here there is interest rate over here aren't they the same thing well this interest talks about the amount or money that interest is generated for the given deposit and this interest rate is how much percentage interest you're gonna calculate for a given deposit so they are actually separate things over here so let me keep them as it is now the next step after finding the nouns is to find the classes so let's take a look how that works so ask yourself this question what makes a class there are four categories based on concept based on actors or the people involved based on utilities and ultimately just to get started and the first one is of course the hardest one to figure out and the rest of them are pretty easy so here if you take a look we have a class account just by looking at this because everything is circulating around three things a customer opens an account in a bank there you can see three words straightly there is a customer there is something called an account and there is something called the bank and that's why account is formed on a concept account has money it allows you to deposit something into it, withdraw something from it, get current balance on the money contained in that account and hence account actually becomes a concept. Same way a bank is also a concept because a bank has a fixed interest rate, it has a fixed transaction fee for every withdrawal and it is the person who is going to calculate the interest on your account right and hence the bank is also existent and the easier one to identify is of course the customer any person place thing people involved with your app or application they directly become classes in most cases so these are the three classes that we can figure out and of course just to get you started the main method inside a separate class is also it's also gonna add another class to our entire stuff making four total classes so at this point we guys can clearly see what are the classes involved and notice one more thing all these classes are basically nouns over here your customer account bank they're all unknowns out there so that's why we wanted to find which of them are nouns now if you guys tell me you'll say that hey balance is also a noun why haven't you made a class tell me this 
what properties can you think for a balance a balance itself is a property and hence you cannot think anything in terms of it but when you talk about an account you can think of properties like account has balance an account uh, you can deposit something in it withdraw something from it and that is how you're supposed to think when you take a noun and then figure out whether it makes a class like an account or it makes a property like balance so at this point what we have is these nouns out there the same nouns which are just lesser out there so now let's see exactly where the deposit and withdraw methods are placed so as you guys remember very two common actions deposit and withdraw for the bank account so here we have the account and the customer now you guys will probably argue with me saying that hey the deposit and withdraw should be placed inside the customer class because it is the customer who is performing the deposit and performing the withdraw right is that is that correct what do you guys think about it let me show you something the account has balance right so when you deposit money your balance is gonna increase that is the money inside your account is gonna change when you withdraw money the balance is actually gonna decrease right and hence what is actually happening is that the money inside the account class is being changed by deposit and withdraw but if you include the deposit and withdraw inside the customer then you will also have to include the money inside the customer so that the deposit and withdraw methods can change that money and adding money inside the customer makes the idea of having an account completely useless and this is why you should have the deposit and withdraw methods inside the account class and not the customer class so that they can directly work with the balance here that is represented by a integer or double variable inside the account class so this is how you're supposed to figure out where the method should go it should have direct access to the variable with which it is supposed to work in most cases now of course this is completely a judgmental perspective if you guys do have something else to say that ah man you're wrong you should have it over here that makes things better please let me know in the comment boxes below because I would also love to learn something new from you guys which you guys can easily teach me all the time because as I said all the time I'm not a teacher I'm a student so now let's talk about the bank account example in further detail at this point you have to find the methods because you have already decided the classes you have said there's a customer class the account class and the bank class so what methods do they have and what kind of arguments are they gonna take and what kind of values are they gonna return so find the verbs for finding the methods now that is the simplest way now again if you notice here I have already done some homework for you guys the ones marked in red are all verbs here in English now, of course if my English is bad enough and if you guys can find better verbs out here please let us let me know again in the comment boxes below deposit withdraw get interest check balance and all these little words out there become verbs based on this ask yourself this question which access specifier are you gonna give to that method is the method gonna be public should you be able to access it from everywhere is it private should it be accessible only from a certain location what should be the name of the method this is again completely your choice what values it can take what kind of parameters is it gonna even have parameters and then what kind of values is it gonna return is it gonna just print something out is it gonna return something remember one rule in programming returning some value is always better than printing that value out and you keep this to yourself and in fact use this in any and every programming language that you encounter in your life so at this point we can say that there is a void deposit method that takes the amount that you want to deposit and puts that and then there's the void withdraw method that takes the amount to be withdrawn and re reduces that amount from the balance that you have inside your account and ultimately there is the calculate interest which should not go inside the account class as per me because what I feel is that the bank is the person or you can say the organization responsible for calculating the interest for a particular customer and hence the calculate interest method should actually go with the bank class this is what I feel if you guys feel something else be my guest to let me know what you think so here there's a double current balance to get the current balance of a given account which the customer can access and that takes care of this next let's go further and find out what kind of instance variables you should have so here find the nouns and ask yourself some questions for example we had the balance which should be a variable of the account class that contains how much money that particular account is having so again you you can ask yourself these questions where will your object store data for example if you talk about the account class 
what kind of data is it gonna have what's it gonna store and then do the methods access or modify this data what kind what is the data type for example in our case we should have a double or a float because we are dealing with money it can be cents right again should you keep it private or public now this is money matter right we have to keep it private otherwise someone else might try to modify the money from outside without our permission or in an undesirable way so we gotta make sure that we secure that and then there's of course the deposit uh, withdraw calculate interest and get account for inside the account class so ultimately when we talk about implementation this is what I have come to the conclusion after all this discussion we had there is an account class that contains a balance which is actually a double then an account number that contains what account number that account is actually having it has a method deposit to put money in and increment this balance it has a method withdraw to remove money from this balance and decrease it and it has the get balance that shows you the current value of this balance so this is one of the classes same way I have a customer class where I have the string name which is the name of the customer you can have any other details like address age date of birth email phone number it's your call how much stuff you want to put inside the customer class for keeping things really simple I'm just having the customers name and an account object inside the customer now at this point you're probably very confused you're saying okay you could have said string account number over here and why didn't you do that well if you remember the account number is already contained inside our account class in other words what we are trying to say is we are saying that this account has an account number the customer has an account remember when in English when you say something has something else then that becomes a class within a class in Java so if I said account has customer then there should be a customer class inside my account class so if I say customer has account it means the account is inside the customer the same way you have the bank which has a customer now remember a bank has several customers we should probably have an array over here that shows what are, what are the different customers out there but for now I'll simply take a single customer out here for simplicity purposes and then of course there is a calculate interest method inside the bank and then there's a calculate interest inside the bank and not inside the account because what I feel is that the bank is the organization responsible for calculating the interest of a particular customer and hence they should have the sole authority or access to the method calculate interest same way you have the transaction fees which is probably a constant that's gonna be fixed for all the withdrawals and it's gonna be reduced over here every time the customer tries to withdraw some money from the bank so this is the setup that I have after this point if you guys do have a different setup or if you feel something is incorrect or if you feel that there's a better way to do this please let me know in the comment boxes below I would really love to hear from you guys about your views and your way of thinking all right so if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below in the next video we are gonna work this out on NetBeans. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.